Hello there everyone and hope you're doing super great today. So in our last Affinity Designer tutorial we created this nice manga eyes and we had fun creating this project. This time around let's go ahead and create some uh, 2D glasses or flat retro glasses. So to do that and if you want to follow along with this tutorial you can just uh, click the link and you can actually find this tutorial and you can learn how to do this. So let's go ahead and create our flat glasses. So here I'm just going to click File New and I'll select A4 and make it a landscape orientation and I'll just click uh, this time around I'll deselect transparent background I'll just click on create and just for memory I'm going to close this project and let's go to file save and save our project the first thing you should do is always save your project and let's just call that uh, flat glasses like so so now that we have this flat glasses layer, I'd like to change this background color right here. So I'll click on the um, shape tool, the rectangle tool, and I'll just click and drag to create a nice rectangle that just bleeds out of that uh, canvas view. And for the fill, I'll just select this nice, I think this is cool. And what I'll do is to have a nice gradient. Gradients always help, right? They always help. So I'll click the uh, gradient tool and I'll just click here and drag click and drag okay we're clicking and dragging it's not working why is it not working so I'll click and drag over here obviously I think I have to select the layer first <laughs> before I can click and drag so I'll, I have this gradient from top to bottom like so and to change this I can click on it right here and select this first one I can even add one in the middle if I want but I'll just leave it so I'll click on this to change this to a kind of like uh, something much brighter and I could just tilt that just to change the hue and for this that's our end point here I'm going to uh, just be a bit forgiving and make it slightly bright I think this is uh, this is super nice if we want we could just drag this anywhere we want but I'll just leave it like this so that we can have this nice view now uh, my UI is uh, a bit different so in order to set that to a default view let's go to uh, view go to studio and let's just say uh, reset studio so we can all have that same uh, we can all be in the same page right here and also I have this uh, hitting so I'll just go to view and here I'm just going to say where is it should be studio and show left and show right studio as well so I think we should be on the same page sorry about that guys so to start creating our retro glasses I'll start with one of the uh, lenses like so I'll go over here and I'll select our ellipse tool or rather I'll go to the special shapes tool and I'll look for the donut tool I'll set this to a color and I'll set a bright nice yellow color and I'll just click here holding down shift just to drag one of these lenses now for the center I could just click here and just drag this and just pull it so I can have one of the like rims for this uh, lens and that'll be quite nice and non-destructive because what happens is I can always click on this and change this right and what we can also do is to switch this over here we can close the radius we can we can do all sorts of stuff right here so I'll just undo that because I don't want to close that but just to show you that's how you can create things like a text circle so now that we have this let's create another uh, shape that will you know come this is the rim so let's create the lens shape so I'll get over here to the uh, ellipse tool and for the fill I'll just set it to a default black oops so it, it's actually uh, selecting that one so let's uh, create a new shape so I can hold shift and alt so I can have a constrained you know a uh, circular shape and uh, what I'll do just drag this over here now if it's not the same color it might be difficult to see so I'll just make this fully black and we can see we have this kind of like sitting over if we take this and we drag this and we put it above this is going to be you know behind and this will be on top now that's super awesome so what I want to do again, apart from having this, I'll duplicate this ellipse. So I'll do a control J to duplicate this ellipse. And what I want to do is add some kind of transparency 
that will have a nice gradation between you know black and white and to do that I'll click on the transparency tool and I'll just select this and pull it now we can't see that effect here but if we turn this off we can actually see this effect so I'll just uh, do this again we can actually see this effect and what I'll do is to rotate this guy here and I'll just say rotate like so we can also uh, <clears throat> excuse me we can reverse this gradient so it actually be like you know super from top to bottom now the cool thing is it's actually seen through our background so whatever color we have for the background we can see through using that transparency if we have this this will be fully black so what I'll do is to go over here and change this to something slightly bright like so so we can actually see that as well and what we can do is to drop down the opacity and just hit it right here like so that's super awesome and again what we can do is to uh, let's duplicate this guy again control J so now I've duplicated that I'll set this to uh, white so I can have a full white shape like so and I'll put that right above this guy All right so this has a uh, transparency so I'll just select this and go over here you know what let's uh let's hide everything and see what we're working with so it's actually a nice white fill and let's see let's put that above this guy that's super awesome so what I can do over here is to convert this to a curve so now that this is a curve I can use the node tool and select this edge and kind of like pull it up like so also drag this edge we can even leave it like that that's no problem and what I'm going to do as well is to select the transparency tool and come like that. Now note, uh, note what happens. It's actually um, kind of like using black and white. So we can just drag this and I'll just push this way up like so. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Yeah, I think this is super fine and we can just drag this in as well. And I don't like that rotation. I'm just going to leave it at this. And what I can do is to set this to multiply. And let's set this down here as well. So let's see. Oops. Let's select this guy. And we're having our gradient here. So let's set this over here. Basically, I want to send this to the uh, front. Okay. I can't see it now. So let's select this. And here we can do send to move to back. Let's try normal. And we'll just place this right here on normal. And what we can do is to just drag down that opacity. This will give it an extra kind of like effect. We can see for this uh, rim like so. We can always uh, change this. We can twist it. We can rotate it like so in any way we want. But I'll just leave it as that. So next thing we're going to do, and I think I still think we could, we need to just to dial this down a little bit so that it actually uh, appears barely visible, right? So I'm even set this to uh, <laughs> let's see uh, six. Yeah, I think this is okay. It has a subtle uh, effect right there. So for this fill, let's see if we can make this a bit yellow. So that's cool. So what I'll do next is to add a little. Uh, highlight over here and to do that I'll use uh, the pen tool is scary so let's just use circles so I'll click on the circle and make sure that I'm on color and I'll set that color to oops I'm on the background so I'll just quickly undo that and make sure I'm not clicking on the background so I'll just uh, select this and click away and then click our circle make sure I'm on color I'll set this to white and then here I can just draw this nice circular shape and once I have the shape I'll do a control J to duplicate that shape and what I'll do next is to press V to switch over to the move tool and I'll just drag this till I have a nice uh, crescent shape so what I'll do is to select the first one which is already selected hold down shift and here I'll go over to subtract so I can subtract the first shape from the second shape so now that I have that all I need to do is just drop it over here now because we have that opacity uh, setting right here it's actually affecting how this uh, looks like so I'll just drag this over here 
and just place this <coughs> excuse me guys and just kind of like rotate this a little bit and just drop this right here now this might be too uh too strong or too hard the shape might be actually too hard for opacity so what i want to do next is to mask out this section and add a little transparency to it so it disappears so to mask this i'll use the vector uh, pixel masking so first i'll switch over to the pixel persona by clicking on this pixel and i'll click on the mask button here so i've actually masked this crescent shape right here so all i need to do next is to make a marquee selection so i'll make a nice marquee selection within that mask and select say here and I'll press, uh, go over to the fill tool, click on the fill tool and make sure I'm on a color like black to hide this. And I'll click that fill tool and this is going to hide this section. So I could just deselect that and let's just do that. Just do one more down here. And I'll still pick the G and just mask this right here. So I'll click on the fill tool to hide this as well. Press Ctrl D to deselect and I'll jump over to the... Uh, persona right here so with this curve selected what I can also do is to click on the transparency tool and kind of like just drag it over here like so and I'll just reverse that so we can see the effect we're getting right here so we're actually having this nice you know fade out uh, effect so uh, the next thing I want to do is to create a nice highlight over here so that will be uh, the most basic one we can create. So let's make this kind of elliptical and change this to white. And what we could do is to use the move tool or press V and just bring this highlight over here and we can send this to front. So it'll be at the top of our layer. <coughs> so now that we have this at the top of our layer, what I can do is to uh, we can just uh, kind of like rotate this and just place it over here and turn down the opacity as well so we can just see uh, we actually have this uh, nice uh, let's just turn this back up you know what you can always set this to any shape you want so next we actually have this uh, nice lens what I like to do is to add a nice reflection around this donut rim so to do that what I will do is to create a nice white rectangle shape so I'll just click this and uh, it could actually go you know above I'll just make it nice and tall rotate that a little bit and then using the V key to switch over to move I'll just place one here this is kinda nice so I'll just do a control J to duplicate that and I'll just click on that to move this so what I'm going to do is to select hold control and select these two and press G to group that and what I'll do is to click that group and go to the donut name towards the right and just release that. So this is going to be the uh, nice highlights that is clipped to this donut shape. Right. So now that we have that nice highlight on that donut shape, I like to you know design the small connector that connects this lens to another lens right here. So to do that, I just uh, let's see how can I uh, how can I do that? I can start with a nice rectangle shape like so right and what we can do is to click convert to curves so now that we have this as a curve what I can do is to uh, let's click the node tool and we we'll just pick this and move it up and then pick this and then move that up as well so now that we have that let's go to our fill and click on the eyedropper tool and click on this color to fill this you know connector with this guy right here so uh, it's not the best connector in the world, but I think it will do just fine. So now we have this connector here. Let's see if we have that. Well, uh, let's see if we can use the align tools. Whoops. So I just want to select uh, this group. So let's lock this layer. If I lock this, it means I can't marquee select that layer. And what I want to do is to transform align these guys. So if I do this, we actually have the other stuff, you know, going crazy. So what I can do is to turn on, to click on snapping, and I'll just try to drag this and to see if it's going to snap to a nice position. I think I like this position. So now that we have this uh, 
curve right here. What we can also do is just to create the edge of the glasses. So basically, um, the, the section of the glass that goes on your ear, <laughs> that's what I mean. So to do that, we'll just, uh, let's just use a rounded rectangle, simple rounded rectangle. And you can actually see it's uh, snapping to this guy because I turned on snapping, which is good. I think the rounded rectangle is fine. I'm not going to edit that. I think it's super nice. What I might do is to just drag this so it aligns with the bottom. I think that's super uh, good. So what I'll do is to create a new group. I'll just put this underneath and create a new group. So I'll just select this, hold down shift and click on the ellipse and press Ctrl G just to group that. And I'll just call that uh, lens underscore right. It's actually looking at me. It's on my left, but it's towards your right. So I'll say L underscore right. And I'll do a control J to duplicate that. And I'll say lens underscore left to change the name. All you need to do is just duplicate, uh, double click the name of this lens. And right here, what I'll do is jump over to the mirror tool and I'll say flip horizontal and I'll hold shift and I'll just drag this entire group and drop it right here. So it just snaps towards this edge. Now we can actually see a little problem here. Like this crescent is supposed to be flipped. So I'll just go over here as well, click on this group and flip horizontal. And I'll just hold down shift and drag this towards the right like so. And what I can now do is to select everything. So I'll just shift select all and I'll press control G and I'll just call that our uh, retro glasses. I'll just call that group retro glasses. And what I can do now is to hold down shift and drag this over here. If I head over to stroke and click scale with object, I can hold down shift and then drag scale this guy. So I could just have this glasses looking kind of like nice and awesome right here. So what we can also do to improve this nice uh, cool design is to add a little uh, kind of like radial, uh, you know, background behind it. And I kind of like this shape because it looks like there's a mountain in there. You know, it kind of like makes it look uh, super, uh, super nice. What we might also do is to add a little reflection here, but I'll just leave it at that. I don't want to overdo it. So also what I'll do over here is to, uh, I can leave this like that. I don't think it's a problem. So I'll leave this one like that. So let's add a nice radial background to have light emanating behind this guy. So to do that, I'll just click on this shape and over here on our fill on the type, I'll say radio. And okay, what it did was to change our background to have a radial gradient. That's super nice. So let's see if we select the radial gradient and drag it down here. Let's, uh, let's move it a bit towards the center like so. Let's click and drag this guy too. And we can actually position this like it's sort of like emanating from the center, which is awesome. So I'll just leave it at like I like this. Uh, I'll, I'll just leave it like that. It might look terrible to you. I'm <laughs> sorry. So what I can do is just add a little uh, shadow underneath for this. So to do that, let's go to our fill. Let's create the shape first. So I'll just create a nice little shape and then go back to V and just drop this right here. And this is going to be behind our glasses. So we'll just drag this and put it at the bottom. So it's kind of like behind this. And we could just kill this down a bit and drag this over here. So for this ellipse, I'm not going to use the gradient. I'll just select color and I'll use a dark, dark value like so for this guy, just to represent a nice shadow for this shape. And I'll click on the transparency tool and drag out this guy and I'll reverse this. So it's uh, in the opposite direction. So like so. So if I click on this, click away, it's like our light source is coming from here and we can actually see this nice faded uh, gradient. So uh, we're basically done right now with our nice cool uh, looking retro glasses, what we can do is to add a little bit of extra touches. So to do that, we can come over here and create an adjustment layer above everything, or we can set an adjustment layer for a group. So I'll just use the overall 
adjustment layer. So first, let's play with the levels. And I'll just turn down my screen, turn up my screen brightness. And let's just drag this black so we can actually see that effect on the shade really pop out like so. So uh, again, this is it without the effect. This is it with the effect. I kind of like this. So let's see our white level. Uh, okay, uh, this is too much. And again, a rule of thumb is never to use 100%. So I'll just set this to like, say, uh, 64. I think 64 is not too bad. Let's try another adjustment for the uh, hue saturation. So I'll use hue saturation and lightness. And we can actually use this to change the color of the glasses into any you know color we want. Okay, it's not having an effect because I'm actually setting the hue saturation underneath the levels adjustment. So I'll just click on the group and go to hue saturation lightness. And this is for the group. So we can try things like a hue shift and we can set and change this color to a much more uh, nice color. I like the cyan because the cyan kind of rhymes nicely with the uh, with the background we have there rather than the uh, initial yellow we started with. But hey, you can actually create different artboards and actually see uh, which one kind of like fits. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a cool way we can create this guy. So uh, if you found this interesting, kind of like, like the channel, I'll leave the download link for this image and hopefully you've learned how to play around and have fun with Affinity Designer. I just used the mouse with the vector tools and I promised not to use the vector tool, the, the pen tool rather, because it's uh, it scares people away. So if you uh, scared of the pen tool, it's not really scary. You can just uh, use booleans and create your own shape. You can use a masking and whatnot. So thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next lesson.